Welcome to Rent's Philanthropic Insights video podcast series, made to help financial advisors make the most of their clients' charitable giving. I'm your host, Kim Ledger, Rent's VP of Complex Assets. In this series, we share everything you need to know about making the most with gifts of complex assets. Throughout each episode, we will discuss the various areas of complex assets, such as real estate, business interests, passion assets, alternative investments, and qualified appraisals. And we're bringing in top experts in these fields. If you haven't been following along with our Philanthropic Insights video and podcast series, be sure to check out the first series that dives into different ways advisors can leverage DAFs for long-term impact. With me today is my co-host and fellow expert on complex assets, Katie Collin, Complex Gift and Grant Director here at REN. And we're going to discuss how advisors can unlock charitable opportunities with complex assets. Katie, thanks for joining me. Kim, it is really a pleasure to be here with you. Yeah, well, this is my one of my favorite topics. Right, and, and mine as well. I know that from experience that you and I could sit here and talk for an hour. So um, we're going to keep that much shorter. We <laughs> yes. can probably talk for hours. Um, but in this first episode, let's just talk about generally complex assets sure. and how advisors um, you know, when, when you hear the word complex assets, what does that mean and how advisors can leverage that with their clients? So let's start with the first. What is a complex asset? Right. So I like to say when I'm discussing this with individuals and financial advisors, complex asset really should be considered anything other than cash or marketable securities because there's just a little bit more you have to do, mm -hmm. um, sometimes a lot more, but it really really encompasses everything other than those two big main buckets of cash and marketable securities. So as people look at complex assets, give, give some examples of what those what those might be. Sure. So I think one of the most popular that you and I see yeah. um, is business interests. And yeah. I know we'll be talking about that specifically mm -hmm. a little later. Um, but they can be as wide ranging as gifts of art, gifts of grain, yeah. Um, I've heard of gifts of wine in a collection. So yeah. passion assets, again, is something we're going to dive into as well. But it really can run the gamut. Real estate, um, if someone owns something and there's a value to it, it can be a gift. Mm -hmm. And so we really need to have that conversation with the, our general audience um, to make sure people understand if there's a value attached to it, you can probably make a gift with it, and we're going to help yeah. you do that. Well, and I, one of our um, partners, has talks. Uh, he likes to talk, uh, uh, tell the story about someone giving dirt. Yes, they were able to monetize it and right. um, put a value on on that dirt, and they made a, a charitable gift of the dirt. Exactly, you really can find ways to be creative. If there is an audience willing to have a conversation about value, there's a way to monetize it and turn it into a charitable gift. I had um, an advisor who also talked to us about um, making gifts of a racehorse. Ooh. Uh, there's some definitely some cha challenges yes. there. And so um, we weren't necessarily... Um, you know, running to the starting gate for that one. Uh, we wanted something a little more stable. Okay, enough of the jokes. Oh, but yeah, but anyway, um, that was something uh, that someone had approached us about. Right. So that is, it, I mean, it could be done. Right, it can be. And even, you know, I had a former boss who always said, if someone's offering you something with a steering wheel, you really need to be careful and figure <laughs> out what are you yeah. getting into, what liabilities can be attached to it, yes. and how will you actually make that official transfer. And one of my colleagues has also said, if it eats, I don't want it. <laughs> so <laughs> Probably a good rule of thumb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so how do you, when you're looking at complex assets, how do you evaluate whether it's a good gift to um, a donor advice fund. Right. So you're really thinking about um, how can we monetize this into something? What makes the most sense at the end of the day? Um, what kind of time frame or lead time do we have to be able to liquidate that and turn it into cash to put into a donor advice fund? And it really, you're thinking about um, how does that person feel about this? Is mm -hmm. there a story behind it? How can we, in the donor advice fund space, really help them? Is it because they're ready to grant immediately? Is there legacy planning that's going on? Mm -hmm. So we're really trying to figure out 
you know, what do you have? Know what you have um, and figure out ways to really think about, is this the right thing for a gift? Does it make sense mm -hmm. for a donor advised fund? There are certain rules that donor advised funds have to follow when they're accepting certain assets. And that's the conversation that we'll have with advisors is mm -hmm. really thinking through what is it exactly that you have? Does this make sense? Are there rules we have to follow? There are very specific IRS rules for a lot of the different gifts right. that we see. So it's really important to work through and make sure we are bringing in um, the individual's tax professional, we are bringing in their estate planning attorney and really thinking through, if this is what's available for giving, mm -hmm. let's dot our I's cross our T's and make sure everybody's following the rules, everybody knows what's happening. Um, I think you and I have said in the past, we've had situations where a tax professional will come in uh, maybe probably too yeah. late to the conversation and say, this doesn't make sense right. with your planning. And this is not the year you need a big tax deduction. Right. We need to push pause. Mm -hmm. Let's gather everybody back around the table and think about maybe next year mm -hmm. is the year for the big gift. Right. Um, I've also had estate planning attorneys come in and yeah. say, I love that you wanted to do this. I, I didn't know charitable planning was part of your goal. We really need to think through this yeah. because of the structure you have set up with gifting to children, gifting to trusts for children or grandchildren. This is not the right time to do this mm -hmm. gift. Yeah. You have it's to really, really important. And I think another important point is that donor advised funds, the point is to be able to grant funds to charities, right? Exactly. So you have there has to be a way to monetize and um, that asset and to have some liquidity and some mm -hmm. cash right. in the donor advised fund to be able to make those grants. Right, right. Because at the end of the day, that's the best part. Mm -hmm. Putting money out into the community that you love and support, mm -hmm. making an impact there. And we work with um, you know, a lot of different advisors, whether it be mm -hmm. financial advisors, some strategic philanthropic advisors right. who are there to help their client think a lot of that through. And, right. we, and we get to be a, be a part of that, that process. Right. And I love seeing when families or individuals come in and there's a theme to their giving that they really want mm -hmm. to create or solidify even more and having some of those philanthropic advisors to think through. So what are we trying to do? Mm -hmm. Is there a larger purpose that we are participating in? Are we gifting to our alma mater? Are we gifting to our local orchestra? Mm -hmm. And is there a, a multi-year approach that's yeah. needed? And to really think then if the donor advised fund is going to be their um, partner and strategy piece, how can we bring all of this together and accomplish everything? Exactly. There, I had a client that um, was very, it is very, very passionate about um, providing help and relief in a variety of ways in the Ukraine. Oh, and so that. she monetized, she made a gift of a, a, a piece of jewelry and then that wow. was sold um, at Sotheby's. And um, so she's had, had cash then to make grants to these organizations to help uh, that are providing relief in Ukraine. And that is a huge passion of hers. And it was really, a, again, an honor to be a part of that. Right. And those are the stories that we also want to amplify so that yes. people understand it can really do a lot of good here. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to have her on a on a future um, episode in a future series. Ooh, to, I'll be watching. <laughs> to come and talk about that. Um, in your, um, can you share a success story? Something that that has been, you know, one of your favorite complex asset stories. Sure, sure. So I have it's hard two. to choose. It is so hard <laughs> to choose. It really is. But um, uh, one that really was impactful personally and professionally was at a previous organization. Um, I was able to help facilitate a gift of a piece of Kusama artwork. Oh, yeah. Who is... Um, become much more well-known, I believe, in the last few years. There was a retrospective on her art in Cleveland a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And we had a donor who gifted a, one of her fiberglass pumpkins um, to the nonprofit. And it was something that could be displayed. And it's something that people see on a regular basis when they interact with this nonprofit. And 
The donor was so excited to be able to make this gift. The nonprofit was thrilled to be able to accept it. And it just, everyone was so happy. And that's what you want Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And while it was a little bit time sensitive of when it had to be delivered, everybody came together, everybody found ways to make this successful. And it's, you know, still living in a great space in the institution to this day. So I love that type of story. Yeah, I do too. I do too. Um, as you look at, um, we'll, ha- we'll spend some time on this. I know we're going to, we're going to, um, I believe our next episode is on real estate and we're bringing in a real estate expert. Excellent. And we'll talk to him about um, the, you know, just different aspects of, of, Gift, giving real estate. Mm-hmm. And then we'll, we've also got a session on business interests, an episode on that. So right. I'm looking very forward to that. Um, and then alternative investments, which we'll get into. And, you know, one of the other things that people and passionate assets, as we've said, yes. and we're also doing an episode on qualified appraisals. Ooh, yes. Great one. Because people ask me questions about qualified appraisals all the time. All and the time. I'll speak high level, but it'll be great to hear from um, our experts in that field. Yes. So um, that, that's another great one. Um, but as we, going back to our, you know, the high level here, uh, as you look at the complex assets, are there, um, what are the, what's the most common? Right. So I really think business interest has been what I see as a Mm -hmm. focal point lately. There are so many individuals that are part of large corporations, but there are also individuals who are entrepreneurs and it's a smaller company. Mm -hmm. And so there are so many interesting things that come out when you are helping these individuals think about what does charitable giving mean to them? Why is it important? And they feel so passionate about being able to use a piece of the business that they've built or the business that they've helped grow Mm -hmm. um, to make something exciting out of that that really can be a legacy for them and their family. And I think so many of these individuals and even the ones we've been able to work on together, they are invested in a process and helping understand some of the due diligence that has to happen in this process yeah. together. Because there is there is definitely some due diligence. Yes, there is. Um, one of the things, too, that I have learned is that it, this particular, especially in complex assets, if mm-hmm. there's going to be a transaction or, or um, the business, you know, if, just depending on how things are structured. Right. But often an advisor might find themselves in a competitive situation. And the other advisor may not have ever, or other advisors may not have brought up charitable giving or charitable planning. Right. And so this is a great differentiator to be able to go in and say, look, you can probably make this gift prior to the sale. And, um, I, you know, I'm thinking of that specifically, but, you know, you also, there are a lot of um, wealthy clients that have um, other assets as well, car collections, um, right. the passion assets that we talked about. In, and we'll have Colleen Boyle from the Fine Art Group that'll that'll spend some time on that. Wonderful. Or, or clients who have a variety of real estate, you know, that this can be a real differentiator for advisors. And right. they don't have to be the expert on it. That's Correct. what we're here for. Right. That's we, And we're here to help. And I think it's really important for us to help give them some language or cues to listen to when they're having these discussions with their clients to think about, it's not just assets under management in terms of cash or marketable securities, it's make sure that you are checking in with your clients. Mm -hmm. Does someone mention a vacation home that isn't being used? Um, Perhaps you realize that they don't have any heirs and charitable planning might be exactly what they need to help fulfill Right. goals for themselves um, and their current immediate family. And so it's just a really great way to engage more with your client, build a relationship with your client and mm-hmm. really help them. You know, there's so many individuals, I'm sure you've experienced this as well, who 
get to a point in their life and they think, wait, I haven't really made a plan for that. Yeah. Um, and so being in that role of the financial advisor who's really helping and really stewarding someone through mm-hmm. um, their financial planning can really make all of the difference yeah. at the end of the day. Well, and, and like what we've talked about before with the, um, if you're going to make the gift and you can avoid capital gains, it's just a more efficient right. way to do it. It really is. Mm-hmm. Right. Great. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. Um, and I will see you at the next one. We'll have episode two on real estate. So Ooh, looking forward right. to it. Same. Thanks again. Thanks, Kim. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone, for watching, or if you turned in via podcast, thanks for listening. If you want to learn more about REN and how we might be able to help with your philanthropic program needs, visit reninc.com or email us at consulting at reninc.com. We'd also love to hear if you have questions or topics about planned giving you want us to talk about. And of course, don't miss the great information we have in our Advisors Philanthropic Insights newsletter. Sign up at reninc.com slash advisor insights. Find all the links mentioned in the show in the description. And you'll find expert tips daily on our social channels. Check it out. Until next time, I'm Kim Ledger. Give wisely.